All right, it's December 5th, day five, and um, boy, what a challenge we had today. Um, if you're just joining this randomly and haven't seen the others, um, that's totally fine, um, but I do want to reiterate that uh, I think it's important for the Advent of Code challenge to uh, definitely try this on your own before coming here. Um, they're really well thought out challenges that make you think about programming, and I uh, you know, don't want to just be a place you come to, you know, get the answers. Um, all that being said, um, I struggle this with this one. Um, I think for the, probably just I was very confused, I think, by the question. It's um, essentially you're trying to um, getting this weird data that's like in a really weird way that maps through all these things to get, you know, from a seed all the way to a location. And you're trying to find out what the closest location is based on these uh, four seeds that were given in the sample data. Um, and yeah, I just couldn't get my head around it for a while. And, uh, you know, I did, I definitely did a little bit of Reddit searching and saw what other people were doing. So, um, you know, this, this one, as opposed to I think the other ones, I, I definitely, uh, I wouldn't say cheated, but, um, I would say that I did a little more research and, um, an investigation than, than usual, but I wanted to, you know, keep up with this series and, and not just give up on, uh, on day five. Um, so um, where the probably the more complicated part of this like is the mapping um, and definitely read through this on your own because I'm not going to explain it well at all. Um, the way this mapping works is there's sort of like an input number, a starting number and a range. And what that means is if in this case, if seed number 50, 50 was put in this actually the soil will map to 98. Um, if seed number 51 is put in, then it will map to 99. And you would keep doing that for this many. This is the range. So similarly, if 52 was put in, you would actually start at 50 as the output, but 53 would be 51. 54 would be 50. Uh, anyways, like you get, kind of get the idea. You probably don't. Um, I didn't get it for a while, but this one would go up 48 times. In the case that um, it's looping through one of these specific, what I'm calling categories, um, and it doesn't find something, um, it then just falls back to whatever the input number is. So say, um, you know, in this example here, um, let's see, let's see where they actually do this. So consider this example, they're just showing the first row, the first category. Um, so it has a um, destination range of 50, a source range of 98, and a range length of two. Uh, this means that the source range starts at 98 and contains values 98 and 99. The destination range is the same length, but it starts at 50, and uh, its two values are 50 and 51. With this information, you know that the seed number 98 can, corresponds to soil number 50, and that seed number 99 corresponds to soil number 51. Uh, it, it's a doozy. Um, it's confusing, uh, for sure. But uh, when you kind of map it out, it eventually starts to make sense. So ultimately what you're trying to do in the first part of this challenge is actually, uh, and you'll see there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of stuff written up here, um, but all we're trying to really figure out is what is the lowest location number. Now keep in mind, we get a seed number and the input is seed to soil. And then we have to take that soil number and go soil to fertilizer, fertilizer to water, water to light, light to temperature, all the way through till we get the actual final location um, output, which, you know, could be any number of numbers. <laughs> um, so the sample data, you know, pretty straightforward. And uh, what I thought was pretty funny is when I first opened up my, um, um, I forget where the, uh, I guess I can just look at it here, December 5th. When I first opened this <laughs> this thing up, I was like, oh my God, okay, this is, I mean, it's really no different. Um, they're just like much bigger numbers and, and whatnot. So anyways, um, this is kind of what I come up with again with some help from reading some things on Reddit and, uh, and trying some things. Um, so same kind of thing. I am essentially uh, in my main.dart, I'm reading lines from the file um, and the input file in this case is the ground truth. And then we are just running the simple solve function and the solve function uh, starts by parsing the data. So let's take a look at that in a moment, but I wanna show how this has been broken up into an object oriented sort of way. Um, so I have a uh, model called a seed map, um, which we'll look at in a minute, but I also have a model called a seed line. A seed line basically represents, if we look at the uh, sample data, um, one of these. So it represents the uh, destination range start the, the source range start and the range length. 
And I have some sort of like helper functions in here to um, see if it you know contains a certain source uh, and then mapping things to a source, to a destination, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then uh, the model seed map basically has a bunch of seeds. It has, uh, and then it has a reference essentially to all, uh, what is there, six, seven of these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven things. Um, and that's where we're storing that. So, uh, and uh, basically what we do to parse the data, we get all the lines. Um, we're just removing all the seeds and we're splitting them and mapping them and in parsing them and turning it into a set. So there's just um, one instant, um, there's no duplicates. Then um, we're instantiating all these six, seven different things here. And we're gonna loop through the lines and we're just checking like, you know, if the line starts with you know, seed to soil map, we know the next two lines will be um, those, or the next, um, we, we basically keep incrementing through, incrementing through and adding these things in until we see, you know, soil to fertilizer map and so on and so forth. And we're just parsing these. And um, each of these seed lines get parsed just by, uh, you know, splitting those up, getting a destination range, this and this and this, and we're essentially constructing, you know, this factory object of a seed line. So uh, it's a lot of like repetition there, but um, it's a fine way to do it in my opinion. Um, then what do we do? So yeah, we parse, we're parsing the data, parsing the data. This ultimately returns a seed map that has all the seeds in it and then the all the different specific maps. Um, so this is kind of just like a nice helper object to basically use. Then what we do is we, um, so we get that seed map back and what we want to do is actually get a list of all the results. And in order to do that, we're basically mapping through each of these and we're calling this function on the seed map called seed to location. So what this does is it turns a, um, it starts with the soil one and it starts with the seed and it does this function called source to destination, um, passing in the um, seed to soil map, which is the first one here. Um, so how this works, source to destination, it basically checks first, does it exist? And this is just a an index where. Um, this is something I would normally do with um, um, first where or null, but uh, I didn't want to like import any packages into here and the collection, pa that's part of the collection package. I want to keep this like as raw Dart as possible. Um, so I'm doing this sort of in a, a slightly longer way. So basically I just check if it exists to see if the index is this. Because remember, if it exists, we want to kind of like return that specific number. Um, otherwise, we just return the input number itself. So if it exists, we return this. And this uh, this function is kind of the same as this, except instead of just getting the index back, we're actually getting the object itself. And once we get that object back, we can run the source to destination function, which ultimately um, kind of maps and uh, takes the source, uh, subtracts out whatever the range start is, and then adds the range start back in. Uh, it's a little confusing, um, but uh, it um, ultimately works. So um, ultimately all these go through and we get a list and this will just turn back, this is basically gonna send back um, all the um, locations um, based on those seeds. And then all we do is a reduce function, which is just a simple way to get the minimum, uh, or it can, it can be used for many things, but in this case, I'm basically like reducing it through and if the value is less than the element, I'm returning the value, if not, I'm returning the element. Um, if we wanted this to be a max function, you know, the difference would be we'd be comparing, you know, if it's greater, return, you know, the value, if not return the most previous one. And uh, yeah, so we run that, um, if I can uh, do here and make sure my ground truth is set to true. And we get back the 35, which is what they are saying um, somewhere in this huge list. I really hope tomorrow's is <laughs> not as cumbersome. Um, I don't mind the challenge, I just, it's, hard when you really don't even understand what you're trying to solve for most of the time you're working on it. Um, so yeah, we got that and then I, I punched in my um, my real data and pasted it in and, and it happened to work. Okay, so uh, that's part one and uh, for part two, um, so big a uh, bit of a change here and uh, so um, it looks like the seeds line actually describes a range of seed numbers. So the values on the initial seeds come in pairs. Uh, within each pair, the first value is the start of the range and the second value is the length of the range. Um, so if we look at this example here, which is the one you know we've been using as our example, um, it's 
describing a range of seeds to be put in. The first range starts with the seed number 79 and contains 14. So it's 79, 80, 81, 82, all the way up, you know, 14 times basically. Uh, so now we have a lot more seeds basically. Um, so now we have, in this example, there's actually like 27 seed numbers. So you can imagine we're gonna be um, looping through um, instead of calculating just uh, four seeds or whatever it was in the sample data, we'd actually be doing 27. Um, and then we're still trying to get the lowest location number that corresponds to any of these elements. So I copied everything over because I was like, I think most of the work is already done here, um, you know, in terms of parsing all this stuff. Um, so the difference here is we still get that seed map by uh, parsing the data. Um, and then I'm creating this, uh, this these records here um, with uh, it's basically a list of this I mean this could have been a class but it's such a small thing um, I just did it this way so we can actually say like kind of name the values within here it's a record that has a start seed and an end seed uh, and then we're looping through all our entire seed map um, but we're actually going to increment um, by two uh, i plus equals two because we want to actually get these in pairs um, and uh, let me just add a couple commas here to make this a little bit more clean. And for each one of these, we are getting our start seed by getting the element at i. Um, and then the end seed is going to be the, uh, we take whatever that same element was, but we actually add whatever the second element in um, the, the second seed is. So in this case, um, you know, we'd start with 79 and then we'd actually be adding all the way to 80, uh, whatever that number ends up being, um, 93, I guess. And uh, so now we have kind of this uh, seed ranges. Um, we set our location to zero and we're just doing a while loop here. Um, and this basically goes and uh, gets the, the, similar before, we're just, now we're, we're running it on a lot more things. And we just want to check to see if the seed is greater or equal to the start seed and the seed is less than the end seed. Um, we're going to return a loca any location that um, has that. So we get that value back. Um, and then we increment again, or sorry, this only happens, um, basically we're just gonna like kind of going through each location, starting at zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, and finding finding them. And then um, if it ever does find someone, we return the location, which is ultimately like the solve because we're going in order, right? We're starting at zero and going up. Um, as soon as it basically finds one, um, we are going to um, return out of this give us back our number. We know, you know that it's the smallest number because it was the first one found. Um, and if we run this on the ground truth, oops, uh, change that, change that to uh, B46. Uh, we get that pretty quickly. Um, and uh, if we actually run this without ground truth, um, at least in my sample data, it takes quite a while to run because of the way I'm doing it. Um, um, because we're starting at zero and going up until it finds a match. Uh, I could have probably put some kind of progress bar sort of thing in here or something to like denote, but I just let it hang for, I, th I think it took like maybe a minute or something. And uh, eventually it spit out this uh, this big number. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it works. I don't know if it's the best way to do this. I kind of hated this puzzle. Um, I think um, I really hope tomorrow will be a little more fun, um, but I'm happy at least, you know, figure it out with some help on the internet to, uh, to at least keep this series going. So uh, I'm not gonna let this thing run, um, but uh, it, uh, I'm gonna leave now. Oh, you know what? It just finished, there we go. So I got this really big number. So it actually like, you know, went through um, this, although like each probably like calculation was, you know, a pretty quick thing. Um, it went through a lot of, of things to get there. Uh, probably was a better way to do this, a more efficient way. I'm just not smart enough to uh, figure that out right now. So uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.